Lord knows that, uh, all the difficulties going on. So let's let's go out. Let's ask the Lord to help us tonight. We need His touch. We can't do we can't do anything without His touch. We need Him desperately. So let's all bow and let's pray. Father, we sure love you and we thank you. Lord, you're so you're so good to us in spite of our unworthiness. You're so good to us even in spite of all the times that we fail you and yet God, you've been so wonderful. You've been so abundant. You're so abundantly merciful. God, I'm so thankful of, of your mercy and your grace and how many times you've proved yourself over and over to me. God, I'm unworthy of that. And Lord, I ask you to help us tonight. Lord, I pray to help our church family. Lord, you know the needs of each and every uh, person going on, going through struggles. God, Lord, it's Lord, we know that we're in the last days and there's uh, we're in the perilous times, Lord. And Lord, it seems like that the world is trying to uh, convince us that we should just that we should just uh, stay down, Lord. That we should that we should just quiet down, not say anything about anything. But God, I thank you that we have a word that we that we can still proclaim today that you are the the one and only true God. And I'm so thankful of what you've done. But Lord, I ask you to help us tonight. I, Lord, I pray you'd help. The family, the, I pray to help the family of Miss Jean Coomer, Lord, you uh, getting ready to pass on the glory. God, I pray that you'd help the family as, uh, in the days to come. Oh, Lord, I pray you give her comfort as she as she as she travels on. Lord, I, Lord, I pray you give her family the strength. Lord, I think about Miss Tina and her sisters, Lord, Miss Michelle, Brother Allen. Uh, Lord, they're going through some things right now. God, I pray you'd help them. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd help them to just to, to mind you, God. Uh, Lord, I also think about, Lord, what a blessing it was to see Tim get born again by the grace of God. And Lord, seeing how you've changed, Lord, just, just listen to and testify about how that load was lifted off of him. Uh, God, I pray that you'd help him tonight, Lord, as he's, uh, you know where he's at in the situation he's in, God. But I pray you'd help him in the days to come. Lord, Lord the devil do everything he can to try to uh, wreck his mind and do everything he can to try to uh, convince him that maybe what he done wasn't real, God. But Lord, I pray that you'd just, that you'd protect him. Uh, Lord, I pray you put a hedge of protect him or a hedge of protection around him tonight. Uh, Lord, we need you desperately. Lord, I think about, Lord, I pray you'd help Daniel Meredith in his uh, moving situation. Lord, he's trying to move this way. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd help him as he, as he makes decisions, Lord, that, that they'd be um, honoring to you. And I think about the Bevins family. Uh, they, they just lost their grandmother. God, I pray you'd help them uh, uh, in the days to come with that. Uh, Lord, I also think about, Lord, there's several unspoken tonight. Lord, you know the needs of each and every individual. Got things going on. And Lord, uh, Lord, I've got, Lord, I've had some things going on. And I've seen you answer them. And Lord, you've given me grace. You've given me peace. Uh, and I'm so thankful of that. Lord, I pray you to get that you'd help each and every one of us with that issue. Uh, Lord, I pray you. Lord, I think about Derek Parks tonight. Oh, Lord, I'm so thankful that uh, just the same way that you saved him, God, Lord, I pray that you would that you would convict him and show him that that you are the uh, you are the greatest thing to us uh, to us today. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would reach down to wherever he's at and that you would that you convict him, and Lord, to let him get saved before it's eternally too late. Uh, God, I pray you'd help him tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, I ask you to help Miss Jessica's mom. Lord, getting ready to have surgery. Uh, Lord, I pray you guide each and every doctor and physician. Uh, that'll be involved with that. Lord, I pray you'd help them. Uh, Lord, I ask you to help Brother Caleb as he's headed that way, uh, headed, headed to Georgia. Lord, I pray you'd help Brother Jesse Bragg and the folks at Grace Baptist and Ubi Encampment this week. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd help them, but also think about Ashley, God. Lord, I, Lord, like I made mention, uh, there's nobody that's went too far that you can't reach them, God. Lord, I pray that you'd get a hold of her heart and show her that, that, you, that you are the greatest thing that can ever happen in her life. God, I pray that you would, Lord, that you'd give her peace and comfort about it. Uh, Lord, we need you desperately. Lord, I'm so thankful uh, that you would allow us another opportunity just to come back to the house of God. Oh, how, how often I've taken it for granted, God. And Lord, I pray that, that we would realize just how precious it is to gather with God's children, uh, how precious time is to us that we get to, to be able to, to worship you. And God, I pray that we would realize that tonight. Lord, I pray to help Brother Zach. He'll be preaching in just a few moments. Uh, Lord, I pray to have your way in the rest of the singing tonight and Lord, in the, in the, way, in the rest of the service. Uh, 
Uh, Lord, I pray that, that, Lord, whatever's done, that you would get honor and glory from it. Uh, Lord, we can't do any of this without you. Lord, we need you desperately. Uh, Lord, I think about Brother Tyler tonight as he's also preaching out. Uh, let's, Lord, I ask you to help him, Lord, uh, that, you, that, you, that you'd help him to preach, Lord, with power and unction from you. Uh, Lord, we need your touch tonight. We can't do it without you. And, Lord, thank you most of all for saving my soul. Thank you for saving us all when we were lost and unworthy, undone without you, God. You made a way that we could escape the damnation of hell. And God asks you to help us tonight. Lord, if there is someone that's lost tonight that's here in this midst, I gotta pray you'd save them. Oh Lord, there might even be somebody that, that's just needing some help from you, God. Lord, I pray that before they leave tonight that they would get the help that they need. Oh Lord, we need you desperately in this service. And Lord, we ask of all things in Jesus' name and in everything give thanks. Amen. Somebody with a word on your heart, somebody you want to say or do it this time, maybe give the Lord praise. All right, if not, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter number 13. Psalm chapter number 13. Well, I want to clear some things up from this morning's service. Uh, I do care about Brother Caleb no matter what he says, okay? <laughs> so, Sister Heather called me, yes, no, Friday, Friday night. I was sitting at the house. We... Our power went out Friday afternoon while I was at work. And uh, I asked Noelle on my way home, I'm like, what are we doing for supper? She said, I don't know, but I can't cook. Like, That's a valid point. So I got home and I decided I wanted Chinese from Columbia because I'm not ready to eat the one here yet. And uh, some of you got that. Some of you will get it later. Uh, <laughs> so we were sitting on the couch and I called and ordered the food and then Sister Heather called me. She said, Caleb ain't made it home from work yet. He's about an hour and a half. She said, well, I can't get out either way. And when she said that, she was calm, she was fine. I thought, well, he's just waiting to get around the trees that are down in the road. I said, okay. I said, anything, I don't even remember what I said. That's how nonchalant the conversation seemed to me. And so I got off the, she said she was going to, she had called me to ask me if I was on my way home. And I said, no, I'm already at home. And uh, she said, well, I'm, I'm going to call somebody to see if they can come this way and look for him. I said, well, call Connor. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he's off work now. He could probably drive that way and just maybe drive by him or something. And I hung up the phone. I mean, that was all it was to me. I wasn't, I, I wasn't worried or nothing. And uh, I left to go get our food, and I got about halfway to Columbia from our house, and uh, there was a cop sitting in the road. There's a power line in the road. And he made me turn around, and in the process of me turning around, Brother Tim called me. Where are you at? I'm going to, going to get my, our supper. Have you seen Caleb? No, I, I've not seen him. We well, need to be looking for him. Yes, sir. So I called Noel, told her to go get the supper, and I went to I commenced to drive. And what he let what Brother Caleb left out this morning, I drove down their road from our end of their road and got to that tree Brother Caleb said he watched fall over. I this was I didn't know that that was the one he seen fall over until we talked later. And uh, as I was leaving, I thought, you know what, I'm going to call the hospital. If he's not there, everything's going to be fine. And I called, and they didn't have a patient named Caleb Shirley, and I thought, nah, it's all right. And I'm sure he's just trying to find his way home. And I don't know, five, ten minutes later, I called Heather. And I mean, as soon as I I just found him. I almost hit him over here on this road. Where, I don't even remember the name of the road. But I just want you all to know, I'm the only one that called the hospital to check for Brother Caleb. I care about him. And he's not here to defend himself tonight, and I didn't get a chance, and I wanted to set the record straight that I care about him. Psalm chapter number 13 is where we're going to be this evening. I don't think I've ever, outside of maybe the 23rd Psalm, I don't think I've ever preached from the Psalms before. And uh, I don't know, a few months ago, Brother Wes, we were in Sunday school one morning, and uh, he's, he, Brother Wes is a fairly new Christian, reading through the Bible for the first time. 
And he's reading through the book of Job. And he said, I'm reading through the book of Job, and I just have a question. Does it get any better? And when he said that, I looked at him, I said, you're in the pit of despair right now. I said, but it gets better in the end. And I don't know, a couple weeks went by, I said, you finished the book of Job? He said, you're right, it got better. And that's how I feel sometimes when I'm reading the Psalms. Is it's the pit of despair, but it gets better in the end. And tonight, we have one of those Psalms in question, Psalm chapter number 13. Verse number 1, the Bible says here, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemy say, I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Tonight for just a few minutes, I'm not going to be very lengthy at all. I don't even know what time it is because that clock's been wrong since the power went out Friday. Um, But I just want to preach on this simple thought tonight, a psalm of woe and praise. First and foremost, I want you to see we have an analysis of time in verses number 1 and 2. The Bible says here, How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? I want you to understand first and foremost under the analysis of time is that David felt forgotten. David feels as if if God has forgotten him. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? Much like a child forgets about toys and things that they have, David feels that God has forgotten about him. Just like the events that wives plan for husbands. How many of you husbands have had a wife tell you, we're going to do something this day at this time? Multiple times, Brother Beckham. She'll tell you nine times through the week. And it gets Saturday, it's time to leave, and she wants to know why you're not ready. Ready for what? I told you we were going to do this thing. You never said a word about that to me. And then she plays the video back, Brother Joe, where she told you on camera. And you said, all right, I'll be ready at that time on that day for that event. I'm, I don't want to look my wife in the eye right now because I, I can feel her looking at me. But David felt forgotten. David, the Bible called him a man after God's own heart. A man that lived his life to please no one but the Lord. Amen. Here in verse number 1 of chapter 13 of the book of Psalms, said, how long will you forget me, O Lord? Forever? He felt forgotten. He felt like the Lord didn't care about him no more. He felt like God had just forgotten about him. Not only do we see that he felt forgotten here in verse number 1, he felt afar off from God. There in the second half of that verse, it says, How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Every time I go to get my son out of his car seat, you want to know what he does? He'll cover his eyes. You know why that is? He thinks I can't see him. Now, I'm going to be honest. It'd be real easy for me to preach with my eyes covered right now because I can't see none of your faces. But when Elijah does that, he thinks I can't see him anymore. And so I'll play along, and I'll, where's Elijah at? And then he'll uncover his eyes, there you are. And then I'll attack him and pull him out of the car seat. But he thinks he can hide himself. He thinks he can hide from me by covering his eyes. Elsie will cover herself with a blanket and start walking around like nobody knows where she's at and run into everything. But they think that we can't see them when they cover their eyes. David felt like he was hidden from God. He felt like God was so far away from him that he couldn't find him. He felt like God was hiding from him. Jonah tried to do this from God. Jonah tried to run from God. Jonah, if you read the book of Jonah, you find that God's told Jonah to go in one direction. And Jonah said, no, I'm going to go this way. And he thought that he could literally run from the Lord. You can't run from God. You can't hide from God. And just like you can't hide from God, God's not going to hide from you. God's not going to separate himself from you. God wants to be close to us. God wants to have a relationship with us. But sometimes things go on in this life 
and we draw cold and we draw away from God and we think, Lord, why are you so far away from me? When in fact the question is, why are you so far away from the Lord? David felt like God had forgotten him. David felt like God was far away. There in verse number 2, we see that David felt lonely. It says there in verse number 2, How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? David felt like the only person he could count on was himself. There's no lonelier place in the world than when you feel like the only person that cares about you is you. There's no lonelier place spiritually than when you think the only person that cares about the troubles of this life for you is you. I've seen it time and time again. People get discouraged. They get away from God and they get off by themselves. I believe Brother Caleb preached a message on Elijah and made this great point that Elijah goes after the battle with the prophets of Baal and he leaves his servant there and he goes on off by himself and tells God that he just wants to die. That's where David's at. David feels totally alone. Talking about taking counsel from himself when David should be taking the counsel of God. There's not a more lonely place in this life than a place where you feel like you can't turn to anybody. And here's the problem with that. God doesn't put us there. We put ourselves there. God does not hide from us. God doesn't leave us alone, Jacob. God wants to have a relationship with us. God wants to commune with us. But we go through things in this life and we start having a pity party. Woe is me. I'm all alone. Nobody cares about me. Nobody cares about what I'm going through. Well, here's the problem with that. The Lord cares. I mean, He cared enough for you to die for you while you were still in your sins. I think He cares about what's going on in your life. And the problem is we get off by ourselves. We go away. We find a hole to crawl into, a bed to lay down in, and we just start heaping pity on ourselves. We start, woe is me. We start trying to, to, to just take counsel from ourselves. David felt lonely here in verse number 2. Not only did, uh, did he feel lonely, uh, but also we can see that when you turn to yourself, your counsel shows you have nowhere else to turn. The Bible says there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And when you start listening to yourself and you start taking counsel from yourself, that shows everybody around you you have no faith and trust in nobody else in the air, around you. Even Job had friends. Now, I say friends with parentheses around it. I know I made light of the book of Job, but if you read the book of Job, you find that Job in his darkest time still had men that came to him. I think their intentions in the beginning was, was good. But then they didn't see things the way Job saw things and they started running him in the ground. But the problem with that was Job turned to them in his time of need. Job didn't feel all alone. But David did here in Psalm chapter number 13. And the thing about Psalm 13 is we don't really know when, when this psalm was written. We know that it's a psalm of David. And you can actually go through the, the psalms, all, all 150, and most of them, I'll say, you can put to a, a specific time period when either David wrote them or when uh, Solomon wrote them or uh, I don't even remember which prophet was the one they, they say put all the psalms together. But the fact of the matter is we don't know when this psalm was written. We don't know what hardships David was going through. We don't know what trials David was going through. But by his own words, we know that he felt lonely. Not only did he feel lonely, but he felt like a loser. He felt as though his enemies were over him. The second half of verse number 2 says, How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? He didn't necessarily only feel like his enemies were winning, but that they had advantage over him. They were, he, felt, he said, How long will they be exalted over me or lifted up over me? If you go back and you read the Old Testament, we find that many times God would exalt the Jews over their enemies, right? We go back and we look at Moses and Aaron and her and Moses standing on that mountainside and he, when he'd put his hands in the air with his rod that the, the Israelites would prevail but when his arms were down uh, the, their, their enemy would prevail and so Aaron and her held his arms up so that God would exalt Israel over their enemy. But David feels the opposite. He feels that his enemies are being exalted over him. David is in a low 
place in his spiritual walk with the Lord at this time. He felt lonely. He felt like a loser. We see that this was his analysis of how time was going. Not only do we see an analysis of time, but we see an attack of troubles. Verse number 3, the Bible says, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. We see a plea for hearing. David wasn't sure if God could even hear him. He begs God, consider and hear me, O Lord. Have you ever prayed a prayer and thought it just hit the ceiling and came right back down in your lap? Have you ever prayed and thought, what good did that do me? That's where David was at. David was in a place where he was begging God not to answer a prayer, but to hear him. Lord, if you'll just listen to me. I've been there. I'm 32 years old. I'm sure some of you have seen a lot darker things than I have, been through a lot harder trials. But guess what? Trials in your life are big to you, right? We don't all go through the same struggles, but all of our struggles seem big in our own eyes. David had a lot of struggles. I mean, Saul tried to kill him numerous times. He, was, he, he lived a life on the run. He lived a life of trying to serve the Lord, but at every turn it seemed like someone or something was against him. And here in this time of need, he said, Consider me. Hear me, O Lord. He, he, as we see a plea for hearing. He just wanted the Lord to hear him. We see also a plea for help. David felt as if these were his last moments. The second half of that verse says, Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Whether he meant this physically or just as a metaphor, he was not in a great place spiritually. He was afraid he was going to die. Sleep the sleep of death. David was in a place where he was afraid that everything was over. That everything was closing in. You know, I, I, I dare say a lot of us have been there. A place spiritually where we thought this is the end. The Lord's done with me. The Lord's done taking care of me. But that's not the case. We find in, in the next few verses the Lord David talking about the mercy of God. David felt like the Lord wouldn't, wasn't hearing him. We see a plea for help and a, a plea for hearing. Verse number 4, we see that David had a feeling of defeat. It says, Lest mine enemies say, I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. David felt that if God didn't step in and do something, his enemy would win. He thought, God, if you, if you don't take care of this situation, nothing's going to come of it. I've seen a video, I don't know, it's been probably a couple years ago, and it was this lady singing a song. And it was a funny song, and the title of the song was, If God Don't Do It, It Won't Get Done. And somebody took that and like put it to a bunch of like different things, and I can't remember what it was. But there was something that Noel had asked me to do in this video. I, I, it was like take the trash out or something. And it said, if God don't do it, it won't get done. And I sent that to her. And she laughed about that because I honestly felt that if the Lord didn't do that, it wasn't going to get done. And I, don't, I say that to be silly, but here's the thing. That's how David felt. God, if you don't take care of this, it's not going to happen. God, if you don't listen to me and do what I need you to do right now, my enemies are going to win and I'm going to perish. David was in a horrible place spiritually. A man after God's own heart. We see a psalm of woe. But in these last two verses of Psalm chapter number 13, we see a psalm of praise. Verse number 5, But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Here in these two verses we see an admission of thanks. Here in verse number 5 we see first and foremost a moment of clarity. In David's darkest moments, he always remembered that God's mercy endureth forever. Amen. At all times, no matter the trial, no matter the struggle, no matter the temptation, no matter the troubles, God's 
mercy endures. He says there in verse number 5, But I have trusted in thy mercy. David, feeling down, depressed, and defeated, knew that God was merciful. If you go through and you read the book of Psalms, you'll oftentimes find this format. Lord, I'm in trouble. Lord, I need help. Lord, I just want to give you praise. Why is that, Brother Zach? Because David was human like me and you. And I could probably chart your life and every day, a trouble you're going through, a thing you think the Lord won't take you through, and you giving him praise for something. Why is that? Because he's worthy of our praise. Amen. He's worthy. Yes. Brother Tim, this past year at teen camp, probably preached the best message I've ever heard on giving praise to God. And the premise of his message was when the Bible tells us to, tells us to praise God, it's not conditional on our end. It's a command because he's worthy of it. Amen. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. God's worthy of praise. It doesn't matter the trials you're going through. God is worthy of praise. And David oftentimes found himself in that predicament. Going through a trial, going through a trouble but yet still finding himself giving praise to God. It was almost like Jeremiah who said he was going to quit preaching. He said, but it's like a fire shut up in my bones. There's nothing I can do to stop it. And that's really where we should be spiritually. There should be nothing in this life that can keep you from giving praise to God. And if you are in a place spiritually where a hangnail can keep you from praising the Lord, you are not as close to the Lord as you need to be. David, they tried to kill him, tried to kill his family, tried to, I mean, just awful things. But yet every time he would give praise to God. Why? Because God is worthy of our praise. We see a moment of clarity. Not only that, we see a move of celebration. In the rest of the verse number 5, it says, My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. In his dark, hard times, David could still rejoice because David had a peace that this world could not understand. The book of Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That peace of God... That when you're going through a trial and you're going through a trouble and you just need something to tide you over, that peace of God can take care of you. Why is that, Brother Zach? Because the peace of God does things that this world can't explain. I, re I work with a man and uh, he had a brother that passed away recently. And uh, we they passed a card around at work to sign for him. And I, I, I was like the eighth or ninth person to get the card. And I mean, it was the typical praying for you, praying for you, praying for you. And I appreciate praying for people. But I didn't want to just be another name on the list, if that makes sense to you. And the Lord brought this verse to my mind. Because when we say that peace that passes understanding, sometimes it becomes a little bit cliche when we say it. But we need to just take a moment and think about that peace that the Lord sends us in our times of need. When we're going through stuff we can't even understand and we feel like we're the only person that cares, the Lord wants us to have that peace. That the Bible says, passeth not most understanding, not some un passeth all understanding. Because it don't make sense. Amen? How many of you have been going through something that would have just tore a normal person apart, but you thought, the Lord's got this? You know what that is? That's that peace that passeth all understanding. That you can't explain why you have peace about it, but you know that the Lord's going to take care of it. That's where David found himself in the end of this psalm. Verse number 6, I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. We see that here in verse number 6, we see an act of praise. He said, I will sing unto the Lord. Psalm 150, verse number 6, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Again, 
That's not a request. That's not, a, 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 and that's not the Lord asking. That's the Lord telling us to praise. Even when we don't feel like it, you know what you should do? Praise the Lord. Even when times are hard, you know what you should do? Praise the Lord. Because guess what? You're not in hell yet, and you still have an opportunity to do something for him. And I know that preachers say that, and we just gloss over that all the time, and I'm guilty myself. But just imagine if we didn't have a, Lord, a, a, a God in heaven that cared enough about us, that any one of us in this room tonight could be in hell, but you're not. That's enough to praise the Lord about, amen? Any one of us in this room could be, in a, could be drugged up somewhere in a hotel room, but you're not, you're here. That's enough to give the Lord praise about, ain't it? Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praising the Lord's not Brother Caleb's responsibility. It's not Brother Connor's responsibility. I'm, I'm so sick of seeing churches talking about we're going to bring our church to praise. Praising's on your shoulders and my shoulders. Not as the youth pastor, not as the praise leader, the worship leader. No, as a Christian, it's my responsibility to praise the Lord. As somebody that's living for Him, it's my responsibility to praise the Lord. As somebody that's been saved, it's your responsibility to praise the Lord. Your responsibility. We see an act of praise. Lastly, and I'll be done here in the end of chapter verse number 6. We see an act of plenty. He says there, He hath dealt bountifully with me the word bountiful means liberal in bestowing gifts and favors God has dealt bountifully with all of us I dare say we go around the room tonight you couldn't name all of the things that you have because of the Lord you couldn't name all of the blessings of God in your life why? because he's dealt bountifully with us he's been better to us than we deserve and David gets to that point here in the end of chapter number 13. I will sing unto the Lord. Why? Because he hath dealt bountifully with me. We're still alive and not succumb to his wrath. David learned that even in dark, lonely nights, that God is still good. We see a, 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 tra a, or a, a progression here in chapter number 13. We see a man that is down in the dumps, depressed, lonely. And then he goes into defeated. But then he goes into somebody giving praise to the Lord. Why? Because the Lord's worthy of our praise, girls. Fellas, the, the Lord deserves our praise. No matter what we're going through. No matter what's going on in this life. No matter the heartache, no matter the trial, the Lord's worthy of our praise. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for everything you've done for us and the blessing you bestowed upon us. Lord, I thank you for this lesson tonight, Lord, this psalm of woe and praise. Lord, so many times in my life, Lord, I felt Lord, like you've left me alone, like you've forgotten about me. Lord, that you've not cared about where I'm at or what I'm going through. But Lord, I'm